Hey everyone, this is John Scarborough. We are in this uh, pasture we did some mob grazing on a little while back ago. The cows are coming on around. We're moving them pretty quick around the pastures. They ought to be in this pasture um, to, well, eh, might be another four weeks before they're in here. Um, just depends. You, you kind of have to gauge each pasture as you go. You know, in four weeks, the weather could change dramatically. Um, so you, you can't just say that's how long it's going to be. You know, you do your best to make an educated guess, but uh, that's about the best you can do is uh, just keep on going as, as it goes. You've really got to watch your pastures, okay? But where we're looking at right now, is it's going to be about two to three more weeks out here, um, and that would give this place a pretty good recovery. Um, as you can see, this, this spot right here on this side, I'm going to try to show it a little bit better. I'm going to stand up on this shoulder, try to get a better, uh, better angle maybe on this. This spot all looked like that right there. See that right in there? This spot right here that I'm sitting on in here. So this ground has not been uncovered like this in quite some time. It looked just like that. You see all that growing up there. So the cattle did this because of the mob grazing. Now they don't they didn't do it in every single spot, but we didn't bring them tight in every single spot. Um, just because overnight you can't move them quite as often as you can during the day So it kind of we kind of had to give them bigger areas at night. So in those bigger areas. They're not um, They didn't do quite as much This is one of the areas we had them in during the day and they did an awful lot Okay, uh, what I wanted to talk about today was uh, Some more on this sage grass. I want you to look right here You can see right in there. We've got the sage grass and we've got the uh, this is a water grass is what I call it. That's what I've always heard it called. I, I know that they're both technically a wet, wet grand, wetland grass. Excuse me, I can't talk today at all. Uh, they're technically a wetland grass, both the sage grass and this grass. But this grass does not give you much for your cattle at all. But this sage grass right here, this grass will give you a whole lot more for your cattle. The cattle love it. It, it's an evergreen, so it stays green all year round, and man, does it help them out through the winter. Um, the, the more you get, the whole, the better you'll do on your hay consumption throughout the winter because they really like this stuff. Okay, so I am so excited to be seeing more of this stuff because we didn't used to see this at all. This sage grass. Okay, for a while there, I was even asking people what it was. I finally got in touch with a good friend of mine that. Uh, she knows a lot about this kind of stuff and uh, she was able to identify the grass for me um, And so so far, I'm really happy with it now. I will say again. I've said on my other videos I have not done any uh, Research for myself as far as whether or not it has any toxicity in it. It does um, I, From what she was saying it didn't sound like that it did but my point is is do your own research on it Don't just take my word for it uh, for me, I have seen no negative effects for my cattle at all. Um, so, so far, as long as there's a mix in it, I haven't seen any problems with it. But anyway, what I'm really excited about is, if you look across here, this is a real wet area. It's kind of an odd area, to be honest, guys. I've never seen anything quite like this, uh, except for on this little piece of property here. All the way up the hill is soaking wet, and that is a steep hill. It's a lot steeper than you think comes all the way down into that creek and as steep as that is you would think it would it would create um, some little channels through there and start draining the water off so there's got to be a lot of like iron ore rock under there and there's they've got to be a spring bubbling up underneath there okay so long story short it's it stays soaking wet all summer long right there so you get nothing but low lowland grass growing in there but yet it's higher land. I mean, that is, that's going up, uh, going up quite a bit higher up there. And you can kind of see the transition, like right in here, it swoops up and that stays much drier. And then it's just right here, and then we got a few other places that are like that. Uh, and this is that piece of land I've talked about in the past, where the pipeline actually runs right through here, and it goes right through this creek. The creek, actually, you can't even tell it's a creek right now. It's just a little small creek, but I like my creeks to stay vegetative. Uh, holds them together better Anyway, the pipeline actually goes right through here and this creek zigzags through it. Okay, 
So we're we are very limited at what we can do for this um, for this piece of property as far as trying to do anything to make the ground drain any better or anything like that. Okay, and you get in here with a tractor and you get stuck and everything else. Okay, or slide off the side of the hill and never get your tractor pulled out. You know, we got a we had a 130 horse tractor get stuck out here one time, and I promise you. Now I know there's a lot bigger tractors than that, but for around here, for what we do, that's a pretty big tractor, okay? Um, so when you get one of those stuck around here, no one else has tractors that's very much bigger than that. You know, you might see 100, 150, maybe, maybe up to 200 horse tractors uh, every now and then, but they're not going to be uh, real close to you, okay? So when you get one of those tractors stuck, you know, you're like, well, what in the world am I going to pull it out with, okay? All I can say is it was an ordeal to get it out. Whatever the case may be, that's my whole point in this place. That I am so excited to be seeing stuff like this right here growing. And it's all compliments of the way we're grazing. Okay, this was mob grazed right here. Now, I've seen this come on without mob grazing. But this was mob grazed, and that's what knocked all of that big vegetative stuff down. Okay, because they were hanging out in this little area because it was cooler. Okay, um, we didn't have them in the mud. We gave them nice dry places. But obviously, they're going to find a cool place to be, all right? So you can see there's a lot of weeds coming back in it, but there's also a lot of this coming back. And that is so exciting to me because now we can turn our wetlands, our nasty lands, we can turn them into something that is valuable forage both summer and winter, okay? That's huge, guys, because this is an evergreen. This, or at least, at least it is here. Maybe, maybe it's just a cooler, I'm not sure what it, why it does it. Uh, but whatever the case may be, here it stays green and grows all year long. Grows much better in the summertime. But it does continue to recover even in the winter. Okay? So just keep that in mind, guys. The, the way you do your grazing, giving your pastures a little bit longer recovery period, not overgrazing your pastures, will help this to happen. Because that's why this grass never came on. Was over, that they were, the pastures were continually grazed. The cattle were always out here. My assumption is, is that this grass tried to grow up through these areas and the cattle would just eat it off as soon as it ever poked its head out, okay? I also think that the higher nutrition that the ground is starting to get because of the, the mob grazing and the rotational grazing, the better grazing practices, I think, has increased the, um, the, uh, the nutrition in the ground, okay, in these wet areas. You can't get, you can't hardly get any kind of equipment out here. You couldn't even put commercial fertilizer if you wanted to. You sure can't hardly get out here and put uh, uh, chicken litter out here or anything like that without actually putting a chicken on the ground, okay? And that causes an entirely new setup. And in forage like this, you try to put chickens out here and they're gonna get eaten up, okay? So it's huge when you can get areas like this to start put, putting out grass that you can actually feed your animals with, okay? Because you think about this piece of land right here. Uh, I'm just going to use this little piece of land that we're using right here. This is, I think, about 70-something acres uh, that we're on right here. Well, it's more than that, but there's 70-something acres that, that we're leasing, okay? Well, <clears throat> uh, you got about 12 acres that's straight bottom land, and that's not even including this land right here, okay? Well, you're still paying for lease on that. They're not going to take their lease away, even though it's not doing your cows near as much good. You know, you got all sorts of creeks that's running through here, and you got all sorts of other places like this. Uh, probably half of this pasture right here, this is a six acre pasture, half of this pasture is covered up in stuff like this right here. Okay, so by the time you get done with that, I've probably got, I've probably got 40 acres of good, usable cattle land. Okay, and if I was continuously grazing, I would only really be utilizing 40 acres. All right. But by doing stuff like this, I'm gaining more of that land, all right? When you go to lease a piece of property, you're not going to tell your the, the landowner, okay, well, this land's not as good, so I'm not going to lease it for as much. I mean, you can try. Nine times out of ten, they're just not going to lease it to you. Why? Because someone else will pay the lease, okay? The point is, is you can get a piece of land like that, and you can you start increasing your forage, all right? So I'm steadily going up on my forage for the 70 acres, all right? It's continually getting better and better and better because now I'm starting to be able to have more of this kind of stuff right here, okay? And you can see how it's taken over. I mean, that right there is 
te definitely taken over that uh, that other grass right there. The sage grass is taking over what I call water grass. Okay, I don't actually know what that stuff's called. So if anybody else knows, go ahead and let me know. I don't really care what it's called to be honest, uh, because it's not very valuable for my cattle. All right. Um, but anyway, it does hold your ground together, so it's it's better than just, uh, I have seen people come through and spray this stuff, and then nothing comes back, okay? It is holding your ground together, okay? But if you can do something like this and get an edible forage to come back that still holds the ground together just as well, you, you're really doing something, all right? You're really making a difference on your property. So now, if I can get the other 30 acres of my property to start growing grass like that right there, all right? Not only am I getting more forage during the summer, but think about that. That's 30 acres of land that's growing green grass all winter long, okay? That's why I'm so excited about this, guys, because the more I can do this, the more, the less hay I'll have to feed because of grass like this, all right? So it might be good to do a little research on the types of grasses that grow in your area to do some research on on um do some research on mob grazing okay and at least some rotational grazing system okay i do not mob graze every single day all right because i i actually don't have the time for it right now I, i'd love to okay a lot of the people that you see that mob graze every day they have interns or it's all they do all right and that's great i truly believe that it would be better for the land okay but if you can at least get yourself on a rotational grazing system, you know, you're moving them every three days. And you can do that with hot wire just the same as you would mob grazing. You just, you just give them a bigger area, okay? Um, if you could do something like that and give yourself longer recovery periods, and get rid of all your cattle trails, all your washouts, and start getting better nutrients, things like that really help out a lot, okay? So do a little bit of research, study some of your grass, some of everything that you're looking at. See what kind of grasses there are in your area. And don't get married to spray that kills off all the other grasses. Uh, like in this area, everybody wants to spray off and kill everything except for the Bermuda grass, okay? I love Bermuda grass. I think it is a great grass, okay? But if I come out here and spray all my other grasses and kill off all my other grasses, what happens after that? All right, well, guess what happens now? Bermuda grass is an army worm's favorite grass, okay? So the army worms will come and they will start wiping you out. Now you, now you have to spray twice, okay? That's more money that you've just married yourself to, all right? <clears throat> Plus, you kill off all sorts of forages like this. Now, I'm not even going to get into the debate of, uh, about how bad for you the, the sprays are and things like that. I mean... Personally, I don't believe in putting sprays on my pastures if I don't have to, okay? I, I do think that there are some areas where using some spray wouldn't be the end of the world, but if you try to, if you're doing it more than once, I think it's still a bad thing, okay? Uh, bad for your soil, bad for your bank account, really. Um, and I don't think that it's good for your cattle, to be real honest, okay? Uh, and I don't think that it's good for us. if, if the pastures are being sprayed like that all the time. I don't think it's good for the consumer either. And that's why it's something that I try very hard to stay away from. And so far, I haven't had to use it at all, okay? Um, I'm not going to tell you that I'm not ever going to use it. There are some very invasive plants um, that if they started coming up in my pasture, I might would consider spraying them with that if nothing else worked, okay? Um, so that just kind of depends. But don't get married to it when you can get good grasses like this that are coming on that can be a huge deal for you all right so do some study do some research and don't get married to one type of grass even though it seems like it can be a really good grass and i'm not telling you not to i'm just saying for us here in north louisiana that seems to be what's working best for me so anyway guys thanks for listening to me ramble on about this uh, i am very excited about this um, if y'all like this content or you like my videos at all if you at least find them somewhat entertaining listening to me ramble on, <laughs> um, then don't forget to like my videos. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you can see more videos like this. Um, you can put some comments on there. Let me know about some other types of topics that I can talk about, uh, other things that you want to see. And then don't forget to share this content. Okay, guys, I'm not charging.
charging anybody for this information. Um, I mean, I'm thinking about doing some classes and stuff, on the farm classes and things, but right now I'm not charging anybody for this information. And there's actually a lot of free information that I have done a lot of work and research to go find and a lot of experience that I've had to go through myself. I had a lot of mistakes I had to make myself that I'm putting free information out there. So I would appreciate it if y'all would like, comment, share, subscribe, do all of that because that helps me out because it brings publicity. My, my What I'm trying to do is bring publicity to my farm so that I can start selling more and more of my own product, okay? So I'm giving a free, um, free information in return, I would appreciate some kind of um, interaction, something in there that gives me more publicity. So I'm being very upfront about what I'm trying to do. So thanks everybody. Don't forget to like and subscribe.